Does this mean anything to you? Come on, Tracy. I, I called it for you tonight. It's coming down. With weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties, for Christ's sake. See, when you go after that strong man, okay, most people don't even try to go after that strong man. Because when you start to go after that strong man, you're going to have pressures coming against you. Most people run back down the mountain. They're like, uh-uh, I'm not dealing with that. But see, when you fought that lion and that bear, you're like, all right, I got a little power under me. I can do this. And you keep coming up that mountain. You're like, I'm putting my hand to this plow devil. I don't care what you bring out. And you just keep going. You keep going. You keep going. And the pressure gets so strong on you. Sometimes I literally have to, I mean, I have so much pressure on me. God says, sing, Angie. Sing. And I don't want to sing, Lord. I want to cry. He says, sing, Angie. When I sing, that pressure is released. And I can go up higher. That's what warfare is. It's music. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. He learned to draw from the anointing. He knew that without the anointing, he was nothing. But with the anointing, he could endure all these sufferings, these trials, these afflictions, persecutions. They make you run to God. That's what they're for. They make you run to God. I mean, when you have pie in the sky, there are no problems in your life, you don't run to God. It's been proven time and time. Read the book of Judges. God would do something great for them. They'd be like, oh, praise God. God is good. And then all of a sudden, somebody would start to do some, something evil, start to worship another God. They wouldn't call it out, and they would let that fester, and that would grow. And then all of a sudden, the enemy would come after them. And they're like, oh, no, here comes the enemy. The enemy would come in, de defeat them, be them have them in captivity for so long, whatever. Then they cry out to the Lord, please help us, please. And God would come and he would help them. And then they'd be like, whoa, praise God, praise God. And then they'd go right back into that rut. I think they did it like six times in the book of Judges. Six times. So persecutions and afflictions, you need to rejoice when all that comes because God is training you for something. You rejoice with that. They make you run to God. They make you stronger in God. They make you weak because you pull on that anointing from God and then you get strong. Believing to receive an eternal life is about believing that weak, frail man can be exalted to the right hand of the Father. You're no longer a sinner saved by grace because you've been through the judgment process. You're a mature son now. So you don't judge yourself unworthy. Now this is the other ditch. This is the ditch of, oh, I'm, God can never use me. I'm, you, you just wouldn't believe all the things I've been through. Paul killed Christians brutally. And God used him mightily. In Acts 13, 46, it says, Since you repudiate and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Don't do that. Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. So the word repudiate is apothemai, and it means to shove it away, to reject it, to cast it away from you. So because you cast it away, you judge yourself unworthy, you can't have it. God's not going to play with you. You either believe or you don't. And if you don't, just like the children of Israel, you won't get in the promised land. As much as he loves you, you will not make it in because it requires belief. It requires trust. It requires knowing his ways. And that gives you confidence and the ability to defeat the enemy because you have that anointing that comes down because of that relationship. That's how they cleared out the land. So to believe in God is to recognize your complete weakness before God and allow God to work through you. That's how it works. The anointing 
is what does the miracles. It works through you, not apart from you. The children of Israel, the, the priests had to carry the ark. They were carrying the ark that, would, that was like a, a type and shadow of it being one with them. So the glory was in that ark. The glory, the presence of the Lord was in that ark. And it was on that man, the priest. And so they were carrying the presence that is just like us. We are called to carry the presence. We are called to carry the anointing. We are called to be one with the anointing. To draw from that anointing. I think I'm going to stop here. So, I'm going to finish it. There's a lot more to perfect it through suffering. So, the main thing that I want you to take away tonight, like I always do, is I'm just barraging you week after week to believe that you can do the miracles too. That you are not unworthy. That God can use you, little old you. In fact, he's dying to use little old you. Because you don't think too highly of yourself. But if you keep thinking that I'm just the stuff on the bottom of the shoe. Guys, I'm telling you. I know the devil has beat you down. I know you've had a hard life. But I'm telling you, he wants those people. Those are his fiercest warriors. You know why? Because you know where the enemy's camp is. One of my favorite stories is that David, he was given this town called Ziklag. And while he was away fighting, the Amalekites came in and they took their wives and their children and they burned the town. And so when they came back, they were, these are the guys that David raised up to be mighty warriors. They were nothing. They were the outcasts, the rejects of society. And they came to David, and he taught them how to be mighty men of God. Now, all of a sudden, they come home, and they see their wives and their children are gone, and the town's burned. And you know what they want to do? They want to stone David. And David's like, what? I mean, they turned on him on a dime because everything they had, they were just so grief-stricken in their heart that they turned on the one that had taught them everything they knew. And they were going to kill him. And you know what it says in the Bible? It says, David strengthened himself in the Lord. When persecutions, when all your friends turn against you and, they're, and you have nobody... Strengthen yourself in the Lord. That relationship, that, that seeking him first in his kingdom and his righteousness every day, that's going to pay off. Because it doesn't matter what's going on out here when you've got peace in here. You can release your peace into that problem. You can face anything when you know you've got peace in here, no matter what storm is out here. But here's the rest of the story. This is my favorite part. So David inquired of the Lord, and he said, should I go after these guys? And God says, go up, for you will pursue, overtake, and recover all. Now, the way I like to say it is that trap door. God showed me that trap door. I'm going to take you through a trap door, David. The enemy's already gone like several days ahead of you, but I'm going to take you through a trap door and you're going to pursue, overtake, and recover all, and bring them all back. Well, on his way, he saw the trap door. And the trap door was an Amalekite that had been left behind. It was a used up, sick, just left there to die, a guy from their tribe. They just went, oh, well, he's just too sick. We, we're not going to carry him. Just leave him to die. And David found him. He says, where are you from? And he said, if I tell you, will you not kill me? <laughs> and he told him. And he fed him, which we're, we're to feed our enemies, right? And, and he got information from him where the enemy's camp was. He was from that camp. And so that's a type and shadow of what I feel we're called to do, like go out and get the Satan worshipers. Because the Satan worshipers are not treated 
as good by their God as we are by our God. The devil lets them use his power, but our God loves us. He's good to us. He strengthens us. He speaks good words to us. But the Satan worshipers are used and abused. And, and it's only for a period of time that they get to have that exaltation. And then somebody will be right there to take them down. And that's the ones I'm looking for because I know that all I got to do is show them my father. That his power, or however it's going to be like an Elijah encounter or whatever, my God can bring down fire, yours can't. Whatever, I trust that God's going to let me do something to bring them to him. But see, I'm looking for those people. I'm looking for those wounded, messed up lives because they know where the enemy's camp is. I know where the enemy's camp is because he ruined my life for 24 years. 24 years, I can remember back all the pain that I've been through. Everything. I've not had it easy. And I know you haven't either. And I got something for him. <laughs> and that's what keeps me coming up that mountain. I'm like, if I can just take you down, then I can spare people from being destroyed. And I'm going to do it. And I've got the anointing on me. I may be little. I may be nothing in your eyes. But you know what? The new big is small, and I'm going to take you down. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm looking for those people who want that anointing, who want it more than anything, that they're willing to live on the edge of vulnerability, that they're willing to live each day for God, not for yourself. You're living, and you're seeking Him more than you're seeking being somebody in this world. That's what I'm looking for. That's what he's looking for. If that's you, if you want to seek him, if you want him, if you want to learn how to study the Bible, then we have the mentor set up and we'll be glad to show you. But guys, I can't give you the hunger and the thirst. I can't give that to you. That comes from you. Stop looking at your stuff. You stop looking at your wants, your desires, what you want to build. I can't give you that. I can't make you stop doing that. All I can tell you is that it is amazing when you hear him call your name. And you hear him talk to you and shape your life as he speaks to you and tells you, I'm going to put my finger on this one thing in your life and I expect you to work on that. Yes, Father, I will. When you throw everything else to the wind and you say, I want you more than anything, that's the only way we can work on this. That's the only way we can be duplicated in that anointing. When you hunger and you thirst, and these kids, we're going to anoint them and send them into our schools. God's going to use them. That's what we're here to do, guys. And that can't be faked. You, I want you to spend just a few minutes in your seat begging, craving, desiring, asking Him to give you a hungry heart hungry and thirsty for his righteousness and then when you've got that I want you to come to the altar and I want you to pour it out say I'm not going to hold on to anything anymore Lord more than I hold on to you I want you I know that you have an anointing for me you have something that only I can do when you line up with those gifts that are in you and the anointing comes on your life, guys, it's, it's powerful. And then we come together and the fullness of the Christ, the body, comes together. We're going to take this city. Amen.